I never thought insulation would be that interesting, but this turned out to be an absolute adventure. Along the way, I learned a lot, made a mistake that could have potentially cost me tens of thousands of dollars, eventually emerged victorious, and I'm super excited to take you guys along on the ride. Let's dive into it. First step for insulation is figuring out just how much insulation we're gonna need. I'm gonna be putting insulation on all the exterior walls along the bedrooms and the studios and the bathrooms and the second floor, the entire ceiling in the back half of the second floor. And for soundproofing reasons, I'm also gonna put some insulation around the master bedroom and the walls that face the YouTube studio. So you've got a little bit of soundproofing there. I got my pen and notebook, gonna measure the square footage in all the walls along here. I'm gonna assume that the ceiling square footage is the exact same as the square footage of the floor plan. Add that all up and we'll know how much we have to order. A couple things to note here as I'm measuring. The studs are 16 inches on center. The ceiling joists, however, are 24 inches on center. That means I'm gonna be buying 24 inch insulation for the ceiling and the 16 inch insulation there. So I have to calculate those two separately so I can buy the right amount of each type of insulation. Finally, getting to work on the insulation and I gotta go and do a bit of prep before we put the bat in with a bunch of spray foam. I've got the fire block. This goes behind electrical outlets and stuff that could be a fire hazard. We're using some R15 Rockwell. We got about two pallets there to cover about 800 square feet of walls. I'll go into a little more detail on how I picked the insulation I did, but more on that later. Future me jumping in here. Don't worry, your computer is not broken. You can stop slamming the volume button. My mic just ran out of batteries there. I didn't realize it in that clip. What I was saying is the next clip is a little bit of kind of behind the scene into my life here. Since COVID hit, I have totally been slacking on my fitness routine. So I've been getting creative, doing an abandoned building workout, running laps around the building up and down the stairs. And when I can, I'm trying to multitask during the workout. So I turned the job of moving those 50 pound bags of insulation into part of the abandoned building workout. If you don't want to watch it, I get it. No hard feelings, skip ahead 30 seconds. Otherwise, here it is. <laughs> About eight o'clock now, we're gonna call it a night. Got the walls on the master bedroom, bathroom here done. Not quite as much as I was hoping to do today, but I think I worked out all the kinks, figured out how to get around outlets and conduit and that sort of thing. Just sort of got the system down. So tomorrow, hopefully we'll come back, start bright and early and start just flying through this, get most of the 
exterior walls done tomorrow. Before we go further, I think it's time for a industrial use segment, Insulation 101, so you guys understand the different types of insulation that are available and why I made the choice that I did for the exterior walls. There are three main types of insulation that most homeowners will consider, fiberglass, mineral wool, and spray foam. So starting out with fiberglass, it is definitely the cheapest form of insulation. Very easy to install, very DIY friendly. Second up, you've got mineral wool, which is also called rock wool. It comes in rolls or bats, just like fiberglass, so it's very easy to install. Maybe even easier because it, it doesn't make you ditch like fiberglass does. It is more efficient and more eco-friendly than fiberglass, but it is a bit more expensive and it also provides better soundproofing or noise reduction than, than fiberglass does. Lastly, you've got spray foam and it's kind of an industrial mega-sized version of great stuff. You take a big hose and you blast the insulation into the ceiling. It's definitely the most expensive type of insulation, even if it is also the best. Based on my research, it is definitely not very DIY friendly. They do sell some kits that are made for smaller rooms, like 100, 200 square feet. But for an 1800 square foot project like my ceiling, it would involve calling the pros. Looking at all those, I ruled spray foam out because I wanted to do it myself. And I figured using rock wool, mineral wool would be a sort of good compromise and middle ground between cost and performance. So these things are each called a bat and they're 15 and a quarter inch by 48 inches, which is made to pressure fit right in between the studs. They cut really easy with any sort of serrated knife. You can even use like a bread knife works fine. When you get to an obstruction in the wall, there's a couple things you can do. You can either cut out a whole chunk of the rock wool, like I, I do with like electrical outlets. So it just kind of forms around it. Or for something like conduit, you can just cut a slit into the rock wool so that the rock will kind of encapsulates the pipe or conduit. One other thing to note here, the brick wall is, I think, concave to the studs, which means we've got space between the studs and the wall. That means we're pushing the bat further against the brick wall. It doesn't come flush with the front of the studs. And because of that, I'm cutting the slit for the conduit in the front of the bat. Ideally, you would actually want to cut the slit in the back of the rock wall so it kind of fit over and around and hid the conduit behind the insulation, but we're making do with what we have. I'm rambling now, let's get back to installing the insulation. Before we go further, it's time for a quick message from this video's sponsor and longtime supporter of the channel, NordVPN. If you start thinking about how many times you enter your credit card number or other personal information online in order to buy things, sign up for websites, and so on, it's a little bit scary. But NordVPN has your back, protecting your online privacy, providing an extra layer of encryption for your personal information. And then there's that fun side in NordVPN, since it allows you to access content from streaming services like Netflix that isn't available in your home country by spoofing your IP address so it looks like you're somewhere else. For example, there are some great shows like Top Gear, Archer, Mad Men that aren't available here in the US, but are available in foreign Netflix. I can just hop on the NordVPN app on my phone or computer, wherever I'm watching, log on to the super fast NordVPN servers in the UK, then log on to Netflix. It'll think I'm in the UK and I can access all the content from the UK Netflix that isn't available here. Right now, NordVPN is offering huge savings on a two year plan with one additional month for free when you sign up through nordvpn.com 
slash Medustrial or use the code Medustrial at checkout. And if you sign up through that link, you're helping this channel out by helping a company that supports this community. Thanks again to NordVPN for the long-term support. And now let's get back to the video. The driver with the second batch of insulation just got here. It's a different type of insulation. We're using fiberglass. This is thicker, R38 for the ceiling. It's not necessarily ideal, but it was the best option we had right now. More on that later. I gotta help them get these pallets in and then we'll get upstairs to start putting the insulation in. One more. Coming in hot. I just made a a massive, massive mistake here. So this is my first time ever doing insulation and I thought I'd, I'd done enough research. I missed one little but very important detail about the type of roof I have. Because of that, I've got this mountain of fiberglass insulation here for the ceiling and I can't use any of it. I think it's worth taking a minute to back up here and explain how I made this mistake and what the right solution is, so hopefully others can learn from and avoid similar mistakes. Starting at the beginning, I thought I would just buy the three sizes of Rockwool. Not so fast. There's actually a COVID shortage of Rockwool. All I could find anywhere locally or nationally was the 15.25 inch, which is made for the wood studs on center. That meant I had to come up with something else for the ceiling. So I decided to go with the fiberglass you see behind me, 24 inch wide bats, R35, 12 inches thick, perfect for the rafters, or so I thought. So what I just realized was that all the instructions I was reading for fiberglass installation assumed that it was in a ceiling underneath an attic or some other type of ventilated open air space. And that's important because the attic is a big open space of air that actually provides ventilation that is needed so you don't have a massive mold problem on your hands. I have a flat roof, which means it was gonna be installed right against the roof with, with no air to allow for ventilation above it. It would have been a recipe for disaster. It would have got extremely moldy. It smells like a turd covered in burnt hair. I might have had to like tear the whole ceiling out or something pretty bad. <laughs> I'm pretty glad that I caught it now, but we've got drywallers coming in less than a week. I gotta get that insulated, and I'm actually now not sure what to do under a flat roof. Mineral wool might have worked because it is much more moisture resistant than fiberglass, but I can't get that. That might mean spray foam's my only option. I'm not sure. There's lots of conflicting information online. I think this is a point where it's worth my money so I don't go down the wrong path to call in a professional. I just talked to my GC. He's got an insulation guy that's gonna come out, take a look at it, and hopefully we'll be able to come up with a solution that doesn't delay things further and also doesn't break my bank account. So it's a couple days later and I just talked to Brian from Ecotech Solutions, a local insulation company here in Chicago. It turns out that spray foam is the answer. We've already got an inch of poly iso insulation on the roof that gives us an R8 rating. And we're gonna spray six plus inches of open cell between the rafters, which will give us a bit over R30 insulation here. Brian says that'll be plenty to keep this area well insulated summer and winter. It is bright and early. I got the guys here to do the spray insulation. The first thing up, the guys are covering all the floors with plastic. Then they're just gonna spray the ceiling and the walls in the other bathrooms that I hadn't put rock wall in yet. So the system they use for spray insulation is super slick. They just pull a truck right up to the back of the building, run a hose up through the window, and then it's just a continual supply of foam so that they can knock everything out in a single day. They're about to start spraying, and uh, this stuff is no joke, so we gotta put our safety suit full on Stranger Things style. Now we're ready to get upside down.
This is really satisfying to just watch the foam go. Got to duck away real quick here. Got a little tent made in the penthouse room for when we spray that. I just wanted to uh, sit down here, have a little chat, explain uh, what you just seen. So there are zones and there are different ratings for how much insulation you need depending on where, where you live and which zone. Uh, Chicago is in zone five, so I'll have to check the chart, but I believe it's between 38 and 49 is the R rating you want. They're doing six inches, which will give us about R35. And we've got another R8 with the poly iso sheet that's above the roof. So putting those two together, it's gonna be well within the recommendations for Chicago. to say like hiring these guys they're going to be in and out in a day in less than a day after they spray it it expands almost instantly and it's dry to the touch within minutes of being sprayed then they've got this cool saw that can kind of use the studs as a guide and then they saw off the excess so that it will be flat when when you go to put drywall against the walls later back up in the penthouse room now I just wanted to do a quick sort of before shot of it for you guys because it's probably not gonna be possible for me to film him spraying foam in here when he's spraying it because it's just well it's not big enough for the two of us and my camera would get destroyed so to prep they just dextrified the whole penthouse room up here put down plastic sheet over everything there's the guy over here who does all the hard work shows <laughs> I am able to get a touch of footage of the penthouse room, so I'll share what I have, but uh, it is uh, sparse. All right, so this was kind of interesting. There was a a piece where you can see after he sprayed it that there was kind of a gap that had formed it. Then he pulled it out and it just came out literally in one massive chunk. You can see this came from between two studs. If I could describe the texture, it's almost like a loaf of bread. It's much denser than most of foams and yeah, kind of feels like a loaf of bread. That was fun. Hard work basically just trying to keep foam from sticking to my camera lens. I'm gonna get a uh, Get out of this thing, and then uh, once it all is cured, we'll walk back up there and uh, check out the uh, check out the results. So we ended up doing spray insulation on a couple of the exterior walls in the bathroom and laundry room that I bought rock wool for, which means I've got a bunch of extra rock wool here. And since I've got it, we're just going to throw the rest of this rock wool into the walls surrounding the bedroom and the YouTube studio to, to add a little soundproofing to those walls.
Time to soundproof the master so nobody else hears the magic happen. Insulation is done. It's pretty exciting because in the bedroom now, it's sort of like there's walls. Like it really, really is starting to look like a room. Little things, little things. So let's do a little insulation tour. Come on over. So coming into the closets here, this one is about six inches wider. So I'm pretty much figuring that's the hers closet. Over here, it's gonna be the his closet. We didn't even plan those lights, right? Like the pink and the blue, his and hers. Dude, come on. See, look, this is a wall. It's like, it's like a real freaking wall. This is amazing. Coming down the hallway, we, uh, we got spray foam insulation in the ceiling, in the laundry room, in the bathroom. Oh, and then come on here. I, I may or may not have showed you this, guys, but if you haven't seen it, these are the L brackets that I welded that are gonna be holding the floating sink in the guest bathroom. So I got those bolted into the concrete wall before we put spray foam in. Coming down next to the guest bath, we've got what's gonna be the big storage closet, nice big walk-in storage closet for, you know, whatever junk, you know how junk is, it just piles up. So hopefully it'll pile up in here instead of out in the main living area. We're walking by the third bedroom here and into what's going to be the YouTube studio. And I don't know if you're gonna be able to hear this on the film, but I could just hear the sound kind of deaden as we walk in here. I'm gonna do a bit more soundproofing in here, put some panels on the walls, maybe the ceiling, once we build the studio out. It's time to break down the cost. First for the 900 or so square feet of rock wool, that was roughly $1,000, including tools for the installation. Now the fiberglass I bought for the 1,800 square feet of the ceiling was a little under $2,000. And if I'd used rock wool for the equivalent amount, it would have been about $3,500 we can scratch that cost because I ended up returning the fiberglass and doing the spray foam. Now I had heard that spray insulation was like crazy, crazy cost. So I was bracing for the worst, but going with the open cell, it really wasn't too bad. The total for the entire ceiling in the back, the whole penthouse room and the exterior walls and the bathrooms and laundry room was $5,800. So all in all, I spent about $6,800 to insulate just shy of 2000 square feet of interior space. For once, I actually stayed within my budget, which was about $8,000 for insulation. I was pretty worried for a little bit there when I found out that I had that mountain of fiberglass just sitting there, couldn't use it. But at the end of the day, I now know about spray foam insulation. I think the building is gonna be better insulated. So all in all, I think, I think this was a win. You learned something and we got the job done. Next up, we get to start installing the drywall and the hardwood floors, it's gonna really start looking like a home. So stay tuned for that. And of course, if you haven't checked out the rest of the videos in the abandoned building playlist up there, make sure you do that. That's it for this time. And I'll see you guys next time.